It's a, another wonderful morning in Salem, and as you can see, I'm all ready for the solar eclipse. Um, it's looking, uh, <laughs> it's for about two weeks early, uh, but yeah, it's looking great. Uh, you may be wondering why the fancy sunglasses. Well, this is just to say safety is paramount. I want you to remember that while these things are great at looking at the sun and not going blind this is also these are not sunglasses i can't see a darn thing right at the moment so just remember if you do take them off don't look up at the sun ah! oh my god oh no i didn't go blind good um close your eyes don't look at the sun it's uh just one of those things that it's very bright <laughs> it goes without saying uh always wear your protective anything you know these are just a few dollars and you can get them anywhere online. I was reading an article yesterday. The uh, They were saying, you know, all these fake ones out there. Well, it's also said that these fake ones, the biggest reason to not use the fake ones is because you're supporting, you know, bad actors, businesses around the world who make these things. And uh, to buy them from uh, registered businesses here in the United States or maybe England, Canada, you know, places that are living up to the reputation, the ISO on these things, they're checked and rated. Um, the ones that come out of other countries, China, you know where, and, um, and uh, like these come out of England. Um, I have a set, another pair. Uh, I bought like some for family. I'm going to give them to them. And, um, you know, they're made in China. Um, they seem to work okay. Um, the biggest thing was they didn't say that they're not good enough materials, but they don't. They can't prove that they're they've been checked really thoroughly checked. So um, the biggest thing is you're supporting bad actors out there who you know, are trying to make money off of you through getting you to buy theirs. Standard business practice anywhere in the world. Anyway. Um, you always want to make sure that you're using these or you're doing some other method of not looking directly into the sun. If you're, you'll see in the video later on, um, uh, actually a link to another video where a gentleman um, hooked up his unfiltered uh, camera to a very long lens and proceeded to, you know, zoom in on the sun and totally burned it to pieces. You know, the sensor, mirror, everything inside the camera was charred mess. Um, so there's a good reason why you do not want even your camera to be unshielded from the sun's rays. You want a proper 16 to 20 X um, filtered uh, filter on there. And, um, you know, you want to make sure that you take these precautions because whether it's your eyes and doing permanent damage and I guarantee it obviously the gray beard um, I'd like to keep my eyesight uh, for the rest of my life uh, it's pretty good at this point but um, you don't want to uh, lose your eyesight just because you made a mistake of looking into the Sun okay um, enjoy the rest of the uh, video um, you know some things that I've got uh, I picked up for this year's April 8th 2024 solar eclipse and, um, you know, be safe out there, and we'll talk to you again. Bye-bye. I just put my Canon 80D with my 100 to 400 Sigma lens. I've got the 16X Bad dunk. solar eclipse filter from Lee, and I've been snapping a few shots on the <laughs> of the sun here. And I put it on the brand new ball head from Manfrotto to go with my Manfrotto carbon fiber tripod. I'm so far in the first 10 minutes or so, I'm loving this thing. I love the micro adjustments that you can do on this. You know, of just 
real minutely adjusting this. What I don't like, and I guess it's part and parcel, is the major release here is in really big segments. So when you do it, it has to go down and snap into place, which that part I'm not in love with. But um, when you're moving things around quickly, you know, that's fine, you know, to get into the, uh, get the shot focused in, get it on the subject. But then once it's on there, then it's just minutely adjusting it back and forth. In this case, keeping the sun right in place. I definitely like this. Um, I don't know if you, uh, ha what kind of ball head you use. Um, I've been using this type of uh, ball head from a uh, Manfrotto for the past 20 years. So let's just say it's ingrained in me. I love the quick release. I like, you know, the plates they use. As far as keeping track of the sun, of course, you get a lot of reflection on my screen in here. But as you'll notice here, it's very smooth bringing the sun right back up into the center of my screen. Now I'm out at 400. Uh, millimeter and on the lens and the uh, it's very easy to keep this in the uh, center of the screen as the Sun moves across the sky it's not terrible but you'll notice one thing maybe more than anything else um, it's real easy even with a good solid setup um, I get you know, a lot of movement. If I'm touching the camera and I'm trying to uh, release the shutter by hand, you know, I'm getting a lot of uh, induced movement just by me um, touching the uh, shutter release. So I'm going to definitely be putting my next time my put. Uh, shutter release on the uh, camera and firing it that way because uh, probably it's going to be maybe just a little soft with my fingers on there.